Chapter 6 While Carlin answered emails and made some phone calls, taking care of his mayoral duties, Hope cut out clothes for the babies at the kitchen table. She'd purchased the soft orange fabric in bulk, and she was certain she could make the fabric, meant for 20 outfits, stretch to 22. The more she could stretch it, the more profit they'd show. She wouldn't have even tried two days ago, because they made more than they needed, but now, she'd do anything she had to do. One of the things she'd learned in her homemaking classes was how to be frugal. She was about to put that into play. She would use every coupon she could get her hands on, and she would make sure they squeezed every dime until Roosevelt cried. She'd put on some yoga pants and a comfortable top to work in, knowing it would be a long day if she tried to work in jeans. She hated jeans anyway. They just weren't comfortable. Her mother would have preferred she never wore pants, but she and her sisters had refused on that one point. They'd be comfortable, no matter what their mother said. After a particularly long and angry-sounding phone call, Carlin looked at what she was doing. What exactly are you making? Hope grinned. Twenty-two pumpkin outfits for baby dolls. Twenty-two? Why pumpkin outfits? Well, I think if we sell holiday outfits and sets for face baby dolls, we could make a huge profit off of them. A lot of women want to use the dolls in their decorations, but they don't have the time to sew the clothes. It would be cheaper than buying the outfit separately somewhere else, and they'd be getting one for each season. Are you sure the dolls will sell? he asked. You really think women are going to buy the things? Hope laughed. Wait until you see them. You'll understand. Yes, they'll sell. And these outfits will do really well for us. I can sew them while the kids nap. You know, mom paints, but she's really crafty in other ways too. If you need some help with anything, just put her on it. Mom can do anything. I'll keep that in mind. Hope was thrilled he wasn't laughing at her. Yes, it must seem like a strange idea to him, but he was being encouraging. That's what she needed. She set her scissors on the table and walked over to him, plopping herself down on his lap. Thanks for not laughing at me. Why would I laugh at you? My parents always laughed at us when we talked about our skills. They didn't see them as marketable. I'm willing to give anything a shot. Carlin wished he could erase all of the mental damage their parents had done. He couldn't help but wonder if his brothers knew how their parents had treated them. She kissed him quickly before jumping back up. I want to get these all cut out before supper. What time does your mom eat? We should probably get there before five, he answered. Glancing at the clock, Hope realized she only had another hour. She still had to do the green stems for the hats as well. She picked up the pace. Carlin held Hope's hand as they walked over to the big house, going right in the back door. All of Carlin's brothers were there, dressed in jeans and clean button-down shirts. They had all obviously showered and shaved after work and were paired off with her sisters. Hope squeezed Carlin's hand before walking toward the kitchen. Do you need any help, Linda? Linda shook her head. No. Lachille's been helping me. She has to be at the airport in a few hours, so this is her last meal with us. I'm sorry. I know you've enjoyed having her here. Hope was sorry she hadn't had more time with the matchmaker herself. She was a good woman, and just strange enough to keep life interesting. I'm sorry, too. I'm sure she'll be back though. I told her she could set up office right in Culpeper, and she'd have no problem staying busy. Hope grinned. I don't think she'd be as busy as she is in Manhattan, though. And she probably wants to go home to her husband, Sam. And Margarita. Don't forget about my dog, Margarita. Lachille called as she carried her suitcases into the dining room, setting them against one wall. I'll be leaving right after supper. Linda looked at Hope. Oh, everyone's here. Hope, would you stir the sauce for a minute? 
I want to go get something I made for everyone. Hope walked around the counter that divided the dining room from the kitchen, stirring the spaghetti sauce. Carlin stood watching her with a grin. What? Carlin shrugged. Isn't a man allowed to enjoy looking at his wife? Hope grinned, blushing a little. I guess it's all right. Linda came back into the room with five gift bags, setting one on the counter beside the stove, one at Lachille's feet, and giving one to each of Hope's sisters. I made all of you gifts, but I wanted to give them to you all at once. I planned to do it after lunch yesterday, but we were suddenly getting ready for a wedding. She took the spoon from Hope. Not that I'm complaining. Should we open them now? Hope asked. Yes. I love watching people open gifts. Hope opened hers, and it was a lap quilt. She pulled it out of the bag and rubbed it against her face. Oh, it's so soft. Thank you, Linda. She reached over and hugged her mother-in-law. You're so welcome. I'm glad you like it. I adore it. It will be really nice on cold winter nights. Hope watched as each of her sisters opened a similar quilt, each with different colors. Chastity's quilt had little pickles all over it. Hope covered her mouth with her hand. You gave me pickles. How did you know I love cucumbers? Chastity asked with a giggle. Linda shook her head. There's just something about you, Chastity. It's pretty obvious where your mind is. Faith held a quilt with tiny little dolls on it. She hugged it to her. It was like you knew us before you ever met us. Lachille and Linda exchanged a glance, and Hope understood then. Lachille had told her the personalities of the girls coming to marry her boys. How clever. Joy's quilt had little puppies on it, and Hope smiled. Joy had always loved animals, but their parents had said pets were too messy so they weren't allowed to have them. Joy would be thrilled to have a puppy of her own. Hope looked at her quilt more closely, and she saw a smaller quilt pattern, obviously showing her love of sewing. You must have worked really hard to get these done in time. Linda shrugged. It's not a big deal once you get started. Hope shook her head. I disagree. I've done some quilting, and I know how big of a deal it is. Linda put the food on the table while the girls compared quilts with each other. Hope was surprised her sisters weren't helping more. She cornered Faith and asked her about it. We're helping with most meals. Linda specifically told us that when the men are around, she doesn't want us to help. She wants us to concentrate on getting to know them. I see. That makes sense then. Hope was satisfied with that answer. After supper, they all said a tearful goodbye to Dr. Lachille. Hope was surprised how close she felt to the woman on such a short acquaintance. Come back and see us soon, she said. Find a man in the area who needs a wife, and I'll do my best, Dr. Lachille said with a grin as she hugged Hope tight. I'll do my best. You have to find a way to interview Grace and Honor, as well. They need to come out here and join us. Lachille nodded. I'll try. After she was gone, Hope looked at Carlin, expecting him to be ready to leave. He seemed to be deep in discussion with his brother, Chris, though, so she turned her attention to her sisters. I'm going to drive into town in the morning. I need to see about getting a license for my daycare, and I need to get some groceries. Does anyone want to go with me? Oh, yes. Linda told me there's a doll store in Culpeper. I'd love to look at it, and maybe see if I ever build up an inventory of babies if we can sell them in the store, Faith said. Oh, good idea. Hope looked at Chastity. How about you? I'll stay here with Linda. Chastity smiled at the older woman, obviously already having bonded with her a bit. Joy? Hope asked. Yeah, I'll come. I want to see what kind of shops are local to us. I don't want to have to drive super far for supplies or have to buy everything online. Joy frowned. 
I have a lot of stuff to get started with, but it seems like you always have one or two things you forget to buy. Okay, three for Culpepper in the morning. Hope turned to Linda. Do you need me to pick anything up for you? Linda pulled a piece of paper off the fridge that had been fastened by a magnet. I made a list. Hope took the list and read over it, before tucking it into her pocket. I can do that. I'm going to act like we're going to have a full house for our daycare Tuesday through Friday of this week. I know it won't fill up that fast, but I'm going to have the stuff for meals and snacks, just in case. I think that's smart. If there are no kids this week, at least you'll have it for next week. We'll freeze anything perishable, just in case. We'll go to town in the morning, but in the afternoon, I'd like to sit down and plan activities. I will want there to be a well-scheduled day. Hope looked at Linda. I saw an old swing set out behind the house. Do you think it's safe for children? Definitely. Especially with supervision, which we'll be sure they always have. Carlin walked over to Hope, taking her hand. You ready to go home? Hope nodded. I'll be back tomorrow morning. I think we'll leave for town around nine? Does that work? Joy and Faith nodded, before returning to their men. Hope hugged Linda. See you tomorrow. As they walked home, Carlin asked what her plans were for the next day. I need to go into town to see about getting a daycare license and do some grocery shopping. Faith and Joy want to check out Culpepper as well. See if there are any shops that will help us. How far is it to Culpepper anyway? It'll take you about 20 minutes to get there. It's a small town, and you might get some looks. There's a lot to do for the for childcare license, but I'll pull some strings and get you pushed through faster. Why be mayor if I can't help out my wife with little things like that? Why would I get looks? Carlin laughed. It's a small town made up of mostly men. You're pretty girls no one knows. Trust me. You'll get looks. Hope blushed. It's a good thing I'm already married. He squeezed her hand. Yes, it is. He frowned as he thought of something. We'd talked about getting rings after the wedding. I'm not sure about that now. We need to sink every dime into savings, so we can buy Travis out. I understand. The ranch is a lot more important than a ring. He let out a sigh of relief. I'm glad you understand. Just so I get a ring someday. Absolutely. When they got back to the house, she piled up her fabric pieces she'd left out and put them into the craft room. It wasn't late enough to sleep, but Carlin seemed very distracted to her, so she wanted to stay out of his way. When his phone rang, she got out the red and white fabrics and started cutting out the Santa outfits for Christmas for the babies. Why not? He was too busy for her anyway. He made phone calls on and off all night, and finally put his phone down at nine. I have an emergency city council meeting tomorrow night. He rubbed the back of his neck. What are you making now? She grinned. These are little Santa outfits for the babies. He shrugged. She certainly knew how to keep busy and stay out of trouble. Those were good qualities in a wife. I'm going to have to go into town right after work tomorrow. You can either spend the evening with your sisters and mom and probably my brothers as well, or you can stay here. Up to you. Hope smiled. You know, I like the idea of having some time to myself. I haven't really been alone in my life. I've always shared a bedroom with a sister. I've always had someone with me because our parents figured if we traveled in pairs, we wouldn't get into trouble. A night alone sounds good. Carlin made a face. Married for less than two days, and my wife is already glad to get rid of me. Hope laughed. Not glad to get rid of you at all. But happy to savor the time I've been given to be alone. He grabbed her and pulled her to him, kissing her madly. Okay, you go off to your lonely bed and I'll go to mine. You sure you don't want to play a game of slap and tickle? 
slap and tickle? Do you prefer getting frisky? Bumping uglies? Aggressive cuddling? Assault with a friendly weapon? Bedroom rodeo? Boinking? The pickle tickle? She just stared at him for a moment. Are you finished? He shrugged. For now. I'll save some for later. She stood on tiptoe and brushed her lips against his. Good night, Carlin. As she wandered off to her solitary bedroom, he watched her with a grin. She was something, that wife of his. He didn't necessarily believe she and her sisters could raise any money, but he sure did think a lot of her for trying. She was a good woman. Asterisk. Hope woke up to her alarm at five, rubbing her eyes. Wandering into the kitchen, she put bacon on to fry as she whipped up the egg and milk mixture she needed to coat the bread for French toast. By the time Carlin made it into the kitchen, she had breakfast on the table and was pouring them both a cup of coffee. He didn't say a word, but simply picked up his coffee and took a big sip. Do you want milk as well? He nodded, obviously still tired. That'd be great. What do you do for lunch while you're working? She asked. He shrugged. I usually go to mom's. She'll fix me a sandwich. Oh, all right. I'll probably still be in town at lunchtime today, and since I'll be working there, that sounds like it's something that should continue. Sounds good to me. He sat down at the table, liberally buttering and adding syrup to his French toast. He took a bite of the bacon and smiled at her. Perfectly crisp. Is there anything you can't do? Ride a horse. Someday, I'll learn to do that too, though. He smiled, grabbing her hand and pressing it to his lips. Yes, you will. After she kissed him goodbye, he walked toward the stable, which was situated between the houses. She immediately made the beds and cleaned the kitchen. Then she started on her sewing. She sat in the room she dubbed the craft room with the tiny little pumpkin outfit pieces. By the time she needed to leave for the big house, Hope had finished three of the tiny little outfits. She wanted to giggle at how cute they turned out. She carried them with her to show her sisters, hoping that Faith had one of the babies with her to try them on. She went in the back door, understanding Linda didn't want her to knock. She saw Faith sitting at the table knitting away at something with chastity. Why are you knitting? Hope asked with surprise. They all knew how to do each other's crafts, of course, but Faith's time was much better spent with her doll sculpting. None of the others were at her level of expertise. My clay hasn't arrived yet, Faith said with a frown. And even if it had, my kiln won't be here for a while yet. That's true, Hope said. You have to see what I did this morning. She pulled the tiny outfits from behind her back and held them out for Faith to see. Oh, those are darling. I didn't quite understand what you meant until right this second. Faith jumped up from her chair. I have Sarah with me. Let me try it on her. She rushed off down the hall, while Linda came out of the kitchen to see what Hope held. Oh, those are cute. Are they for the dolls Faith makes? Yes, what do you think? Hope wasn't sure how much Linda knew about Faith's business, so she kept the whole tone casual. They're so cute. I want a doll, and I want one of those cute outfits. I love decorating for Halloween. Hope smiled as Faith ran back into the room with Sarah. She put the lifelike doll on the table and stripped the clothes off. Linda stared at the doll for a moment. That looks so real. It's amazing. Where do you get the heads? I sculpt them, Faith said with a smile. She held her hand out for the outfit, and Hope handed it to her. A minute later, she held the baby up with the orange pumpkin outfit on. The little orange and green stem hat made Hope giggle. That's exactly how I pictured it. Oh, it's wonderful, Hope. How long did it take you to make these? I cut them out yesterday, and that took about three hours, 
but I managed to cut 22 out of fabric that was supposed to be for 20. And then I've been sewing since 6. So about 6 hours, so far, but I'm getting faster. I think I'll be able to sew the others in under 30 minutes each, now that they're all cut out. So you could conceivably do a whole set every day, even with the daycare. I absolutely think I could. Faith nodded, obviously excited. That's awesome. I think we can charge even more than I was thinking for them. Joy walked in, looking at the baby. Oh, that outfit is adorable. You did great, Hope. Hope grinned. Thanks. She looked at Linda. Did you think of anything else you need? Linda thought for a minute before shaking her head. No. I think I'm all set. All right. We'll be back in a few hours. We'll probably eat lunch in town. Linda nodded. Have a good time. As they were walking toward the door, Hope hissed at Chastity, behave yourself. I always do. Chastity said with a sweet smile. Hope frowned, but walked back toward the house she shared with Carlin, her sisters at her sides. If I'd been thinking, I'd have driven over this morning. Sorry you have to walk. Oh, no big deal, Faith said. It's good for us. How's married life? Joy asked, a twinkle in her eye. I've been afraid to ask with chastity there, because she'd want to ask about the size of his pickle. Hope shook her head. Carlin's a good man. I'm glad we're married. She didn't add anything, not wanting to accidentally give something away. She'd promised Carlin she wouldn't tell her sisters about their arrangement, and she'd never been able to keep a secret from them. The town was just as small as the one they'd grown up in, but the doll store there was unique. Faith talked to the owner about her business, showing her the website on her phone. The owner agreed that if she ever caught up with orders and had an inventory, she'd be happy to sell them. There was a small yarn store in town which thrilled Joy to no end. This will be perfect for getting the little things I need. I mean, they don't have the canvas, but I'll buy that in bulk anyway. Next they stopped at City Hall to apply for a childcare license. The process was quite easy, and the girl they spoke to seemed excited. My mom is sick of keeping my son while I work. Do you take two-year-olds? We'll take any age up until they start school. Oh, that's awesome. I'm Tiffany, and I'll be bringing Sebastian out tomorrow. Mom is going to be so happy. Tiffany couldn't have been much older than 20, and she bounced as she spoke to them. I'll look forward to that. What time will you bring him? Hope asked. 7.30 or so. I need to be here at 8. That's perfect. You know where the ranch is? Tiffany laughed. Oh, every girl for miles around knows where the Culpeper Ranch is. Those men are too handsome to go unnoticed. Hope frowned at that. She didn't like the idea of all the girls in town checking out her husband. I'm married to Carlin. Congratulations. That one is a real catch. Tiffany winked at her, making Hope feel better about the whole thing. After they left there, it was off to the grocery store. We have our first kid. I'd better buy food for twelve. I don't think we can handle more than that. Sounds good to me, Joy said. She didn't care much about the childcare, because she had her own work to do, but she'd help out whenever she needed to. They all would. Hope hadn't asked, but the answer was unspoken. Sisters help sisters. Despite their financial troubles, Hope knew she was where she needed to be. She was finally happy. If only she could get over her fear of making love with her husband. Chapter 7 After putting away the groceries, Hope, Joy, and Faith all returned to the big house to talk strategy. Hope carried her iPad with her, knowing it would be the easiest way for her to take notes on what they discussed. Joy spread her arms wide as they walked. I love Wyoming. This air is so fresh and the people are so nice. 
And there's a sexy cowboy kissing me every evening. Bo? Kissing? Colby? Hope asked. She felt like she'd been a bad sister since they'd arrived in Culpeper, not paying as much attention to her sister's lives as she should. Yes, Colby. He's incredible. You're not mad at me for snatching Carlin up before anyone else got a shot at him? Hope asked. Joy and Faith both laughed. Not at all. Faith said. I wouldn't have Carlin on a bet. He seems so boring. Hope grinned. Really? Carlin? His kisses set her on fire, but her sisters thought he was boring? What was wrong with them? Or was something wrong with her? Yes. Joy said. I've spent time with all three of the other brothers, but Colby is the man for me. I wouldn't want Carlin. Hope linked her arm with Joy's. I'm so glad. Sisters before misters. Joy laughed. We've always said that, but it never mattered before now. Of course, we all knew Chastity was lying when she said it. God love Chastity, Faith said. I love her, but she's nuts. She says she and Chris haven't done the deed yet, but they sneak off when they think no one is looking. I'm not going to think about it. Hope declared. I'm going to set up a business plan for Culpepper Care today. She paused for a moment before looking at Faith. Do you think you could up your production at all? I know you don't have your stuff yet, but when it gets here, your business is established, so I think you'll have a better chance to make more than the rest of us. Faith nodded. As soon as my clay and kiln are here, I'll be working like a madwoman. We're all as determined to make the finances work out as you are, Hope. Good. If you can make even 25% more, that would be awesome. Hope had no idea how much they needed to earn, so she wanted to maximize every minute of time to make as much as they could. She'd always been the numbers girl, so it was up to her to make it happen. I think I can do that. I'll do my best. I wonder if Chastity could make little socks. Faith looked contemplative at the idea. I bet we could talk Linda into making baby quilts for them if we explained why. Joy suggested. We could even just tell her that we're hoping to sell them. She knows we're doing an Etsy store and eBay. I bet she'd make doll quilts for that. Hope didn't want to turn Faith off of any idea that might help them make money. As long as she didn't have to tell her secret, Hope was sure Faith would be agreeable. We could do that, Faith said. Are you going to make notes about everything and tell us how much to charge to make it worth our while? Is the Pope Catholic? Hope asked. They walked in the back door of the big house, finding Linda and Chastity at the table together. Linda was cutting out quilt blocks, and Chastity's knitting needles were flying as she worked on a pair of socks. What are you making, Linda? Hope asked, putting her iPad down on the other end of the table from where Linda was set up with a cutting mat and a rotary cutter. I thought I'd try my hand at making a doll quilt. If we make them an add-on for your dolls, I think we could make some money from them. Linda looked at Faith. Do you think that's a good idea? I think it's brilliant. The more we can add on for the dolls, the more money we'll make. Oh, good. Linda said with a smile. I was afraid you'd think I was being presumptuous. Hope shook her head. We're all doing everything we can to make money to help out. I appreciate you thinking of it and being willing to work with us. Faith sat down at the table. I love the doll shop in town. They said that they would take any extra dolls we end up with. That's wonderful. Do you have any idea what you'll sell them for? Faith shrugged. Hope is in charge of all that. She's our money person. Hope turned her iPad on and looked at the others expectantly. We'll have at least one child starting tomorrow. He's two and his name is Sebastian. Oh, sure. Tiffany Snow's little boy. Her mother is so sick of having to run after a toddler all day. 
Linda shook her head. I'd love to be privileged enough to run after my grandbaby. The phone rang then, startling Hope. You have a home phone? I didn't think they even existed anymore. Linda laughed, walking over to answer the phone. Hello? Oh, sure. Yes, we're planning on starting tomorrow. Stacy and Bob? Yes, we'll be ready for them. Thanks. She looked at Hope. Stacy is four, and Bob is two. We're going to start out with three, I guess. The phone rang pretty consistently after that as word spread through the small town that someone was opening a childcare. By the end of the afternoon, they had eleven children signed up to come the following day. Hope did some quick math, working out the profit for each child. I'll need some help with meals and watching the kids. Is everyone on board with this? Hope looked at Faith. You'll be the last I ask for help once your supplies are in, but I will still need to ask some. Of course. We're all in this together. Hope smiled, continuing with the menu planning she'd started before the phone calls. Chastity, would you prefer to watch the kids in the morning while I cook lunch? Or do you want to cook lunch while I watch the midgets? I'll watch the kids with Linda. They're more fun than standing around in the kitchen, surrounded by pots and pans. That works for me. We'll all have craft time in the evenings and during nap time. Most of us should be able to get some craft time in during the day as well. Hope turned to Linda. I'll do crockpot meals for us every day for supper, unless I can cook whatever we're having quickly. Could you plan to do breakfast for the children? Sounds like the earliest will be here at seven. Linda nodded. I'll take care of breakfast every morning. All of the parents know me, so it will be easy for them to drop off to me. What time are you planning on getting here? Probably 6.30 or so. That'll give us time to get everything we need to have together for the day. Most of the kids are either in the two-year-old or four-year-old age range. If you take the two-year-olds, I'll take the four-year-olds. I can do a lesson plan that will teach them their numbers, letters, and colors. All of that important stuff. Sure. That sounds great. I'll go get some of the boys' toys out of the attic, and we can get them cleaned up and ready for a new generation of children. Linda hurried off, heading toward the garage. Faith looked at Hope. Do you really think we can make enough? Hope nodded, her eyes lit up. I really do. I think the men will be very pleasantly surprised with the kind of money we'll be bringing in. They don't have a lot of faith in us yet. Let's show them what we can do. Why do people always underestimate us? Joy asked. Hope shrugged and looked at the clock. I need to get home if I'm going to make dinner for my husband. I'm going to try and make a few of the Santa outfits tonight. I'd like to have one of each made up, so that we can put them on the website to let people know that they're for sale. By the weekend, we should be able to add a page for them. That's a great idea. Hopefully, I'll have my kiln within a week. I can't wait to be able to work on my little hobby full-time. Mom's going to be so mad when she hears what we're doing. Faith didn't look at all upset by that idea. Hope waited until Linda got back. Since I need to leave, can you guys make sure that that stuff gets cleaned and sanitized before the kids get here tomorrow? Chastity nodded. I'll take that over. Hope smiled at her sister. Thank you. I really appreciate it. With a wave, she hurried out the door to walk home. She could cook a real meal for her husband that evening, and she was thrilled. While dinner was in the oven, she quickly sewed three of the Santa outfits. She kept watching the clock, and finally at 6.15, she remembered that Carlin had said he had a city council meeting and would eat in town. She frowned, removing the food from the oven. He would have a good meal to eat for lunch the next day if he wanted it. She ate her solitary meal, excited to have the evening alone, even while she was disappointed that she wouldn't get to spend time with Carlin. 
After putting his meal into the refrigerator and washing the dishes, she went to work on the St. Patrick's Day outfit. By the time Carlin walked in the door, she had the first three little green shamrock outfits sewn as well as little Easter outfits. Only two more to go. She knew she wanted to do a onesie for the 4th of July, but it was the last one that was befuddling her. She wanted six outfits, and she only had five. She'd have to think on the last one. Are you hungry? she asked, running to the door, to kiss Carlin. How was your meeting? He rubbed the back of his neck, the gesture she was learning he made whenever he was stressed. It was long. No, I'm not hungry. Okay. Anything I can help with? He shook his head. I need a shower in my bed. Walking down the hall toward his room, he called over his shoulder, Good night. Hope was surprised. It was the first time she'd spoken to him when he hadn't tried to get her into bed. Was he mad at her? Carlin stripped and stood under the shower spray. He couldn't listen to one more word from anyone. It had been an awful meeting, with bickering from both sides of the traffic light fiasco. Half the council members were sure a traffic light would be the ruination of their calm, old-fashioned town. The other half were just as convinced that if they didn't get the traffic light, plagues would rain down from heavens over them. Why couldn't people just get along? He was paid a very small salary as mayor, but he'd decided that he and Hope needed to find a way to live on that little bit until they found a way to pay Travis what he wanted. He still didn't know why Travis thought it was all right to bankrupt the thing that had made their granddaddy happy, but if that's what he had in mind, they weren't going to give him the satisfaction. Thankfully his house and truck were paid for, so they should be able to make it with their expenses. He wished he could give hope the world, but that wasn't going to happen. Not yet anyway. Hope stood in the living room for a few minutes after Carlin shut his bedroom door, wondering what she'd done to offend him. Was he angry that she wasn't willing to have sex yet, even though he'd agreed before they married? If he was, he was just going to have to live with it, because she wasn't ready for that. She went back into the craft room and started up the sewing machine, cranking out two more outfits, before bed. The man could be infuriating, there was no doubt about that. She just wished she was allowed to talk to her sisters about it. She knew it would make her feel better. Asterisk. Carlin was still distant during breakfast the next morning. After tossing and turning all night, Hope needed to find out what his problem was. Whatever she'd done to annoy him, she wanted out in the open so they could deal with it. What did I do? She asked as he was taking a bite of his eggs. What do you mean? I want to know why you're mad at me. I didn't do anything wrong that I know of, so just spit it out so we can deal with it. Hope had never been one to pussyfoot around any negative situation. He shook his head. Why do you think you did something wrong? You were gone all evening, and then when you came home, you went right to bed. You only kissed me once, and that's because I kind of forced it on you. If that doesn't mean something's wrong, I don't know what does. Carlin rubbed the back of his neck, and Hope's eyes narrowed. The city council meeting last night was awful. The council members are divided over something stupid, and it ended up as a shouting match. I was so annoyed when I got home, that I thought it would be better if I didn't inflict my bad mood on you. She frowned. Really? That's all it was? Yeah. I'm sorry I made you think otherwise. We've been trying to decide if we're going to put in a traffic light on Main Street. You'd think it would be an easy decision, but with the way the council is reacting, our decision is going to cause Armageddon to come early if we choose the wrong thing. He made a face. We've been fighting the same subject at every meeting for six months. One of the members called an emergency meeting last night, and I thought we'd get it resolved once and for all. Nope. Everyone is still mad at each other. Hope shook her head. That sounds ridiculous. It is. He stood up. I have to go. We're starting to brand the cattle this morning, and it's a long process. 
He grabbed her hand and pulled her to her feet and against him. You could tempt me to stay if you wanted to play hide the cannoli. He kissed her sweetly. She wrapped her arms around his neck and kissed him back. Hide the cannoli, huh? Oh, yeah. I've been dying to play it with you. As tempting as your offer is, I have eleven kids who will be arriving at your mother's house in the next couple of hours. I think your mom and my sisters would appreciate it if I came and showed them the schedule I've worked out for Culpepper Care. Fine. We'll do the tube snake boogie later. He grabbed his hat from the counter, shoved it on his head and left, closing the door behind him. The tube snake boogie? Where does he get these? She hurried through her morning chores, started supper in the crock pot, and hurried over to the big house. She couldn't get her silly husband out of her mind, though, and she knew she was walking around with a goofy grin on her face. As soon as Chastity saw her, she giggled. Someone must have spent some time doing the horizontal polka with her husband this morning. Hope blushed and sat down at the table, pulling out the schedules she'd printed off for everyone the night before. I made a schedule of our events of the day for everyone. Faith, I'm assuming you're working with us until your stuff arrives. At Faith's nod, she continued. I've got you helping out with outside time and helping me with numbers and letters for the older kids. If you can take over during those times, I can get some sewing done. She'd finally decided to do a dress outfit as the last thing for the babies. The girls would get a little pink dress and the boys would get a pair of blue shorts with suspenders and a white shirt. They'd be cute, and she had the fabric she needed already. She was always buying more fabric than she needed. It was an obsession. When the kids started coming in, Hope was surprised. Fifteen children showed up, for more than she'd planned for. Thankfully she'd brought extra snacks, so they'd be able to accommodate the bigger number. Each parent was asked to fill out a form explaining all of the children's allergies, special dietary needs, and preferences. Linda had brought down several books for the children, and she even had a small slide that could go into the living room. There were many balls and stick horses. The children would not lack for things to do. Hope divided them into groups, taking the four-year-olds and sitting them down for a talk about the rules that needed to be followed. She could already see that a little girl named Anna would be the smartest one in the group, as well as the one who would make sure everyone else followed the rules. A little boy named Roy was going to be the rule-breaker, tugging on Anna's pigtail during the talk about rules. The day zipped by, even with the chaos that filled the air. Parlin stopped in for lunch. He had a way with the children that thrilled Hope, making her know he would be a good father. When his short break was up, he kissed her softly and hurried off, telling her he might be home late. The last of the children left after six, and Hope sank into a chair, staring straight ahead for a minute. Her sisters and Linda all followed suit. That was exhausting. Linda nodded. But fun. I can't wait until we have that many little ones running around all the time. Joy looked at Linda, her face serious. You don't want grandkids, do you, Linda? Oh, no. No more than six hundred or so. Linda rubbed her hands over her face, obviously exhausted. It's going to get easier once we're used to them, right? Definitely, Hope told her. Every day will get easier. Linda got up and went to the kitchen, digging through the cabinets for something quick to cook. I usually have this all planned out early in the day. Man, this is one of those days when I think the kitchen should be removed and someone should just put in a drive through window for deliveries. Faith nodded. That sounds good to me right about now. Only Chastity was unaffected, but she'd spent the majority of the day knitting. She'd take breaks to come out and talk to the children, but like the others, she was on a mission to make as much money as possible. She knew she'd have her turn with the children once Faith's supplies arrived. Hope got to her feet. I've got to get home. I want to be there before Carlin is. Linda smiled. You know he'll understand if you're not. 
Hope nodded. I know he will. I just feel like I should be there first. With a wave, she hurried out the door. Carlin didn't have a meeting that night, so they would have the evening together. She was starting to feel like she knew him well enough to make love, but she wasn't going to tell him that yet. When she got there, she hurried to set the table and put dinner on. She didn't have to wait long for him. He arrived ten minutes after she did, looking dead on his feet. Long day? she asked. He nodded. Very long day. Do I have time to shower before supper? Hope nodded. Sure. That'll give me time to make some biscuits to go with the stew. Carlin came back out twenty minutes later, looking refreshed. How did the first day with the kids go? Oh, really well. They're all angels. He snorted. I saw Roy Pettigrew put a frog down Anna Smith's shirt. He's an angel? Well, he might be the exception to the rule but he was sweet and well-behaved as could be while he was napping. I'm sure. That's probably the only time that boy is well-behaved. I saw him push a little boy down because he was blocking the water fountain at church one Sunday morning. Oh, I don't believe that. Hope said with a grin. The biscuits aren't quite ready, so start with the salad. She put the salad in front of him, a bottle of ranch dressing beside it. She knew he liked ranch, because it was the one of the few things that had been in his refrigerator when she'd arrived. He started getting calls again right after supper, and spent the whole evening discussing city business. Hope did the dishes, and then cut out more of the clothes for the dolls. She'd planned to take the evening off to spend with her husband, but if he was too busy, she'd certainly make the most of her free time. When he finally put his phone down after the last call, he sighed. Bedtime for me. Another tough day tomorrow. He kissed her briefly. I'm going to bed. He was already in bed before she realized he had once again failed to ask her to make love with him. Was he losing interest in her already? She cleaned up her mess and carefully put the pieces in a bag. She would work during the kids' nap time. Chastity and Joy had agreed to take over during nap time because their crafts were quiet while Hope's was loud. Hope yawned as she headed into bed. It was going to be a long week. Chapter 8 That first day set a pattern for the week. The newlyweds woke early, went their separate ways, saw each other for a few minutes for lunch, ate supper together, and then Carlin spent the evenings on the phone while Hope worked on sewing. On Friday night, she expected to have his full attention for a change, because she knew that she wouldn't be working the next day, but Carlin was again on the phone all night. When he finished his last call, she walked to him and sat on his lap, kissing his cheek. What are we going to do tomorrow? He raised an eyebrow at her. I'm going to have to work like I always do on Saturdays. I figured you'd spend the day with mom and your sisters doing all your crafty stuff. She frowned. She'd made good money that week with the number of children they'd ended up with, and she already had a waiting list for Culpepper care. Of course, there was always more work to be done. That's fine. I have lots of work I can do. I should probably spend a couple of hours cleaning the house as well. Carlin looked around him, trying to see something that needed to be cleaned. The woman kept everything neat as a pin. I guess. She shrugged. I'll spend the morning with your mom and my sisters, and I'll come back here to work after that. She stood up, certain he wasn't interested in spending time with her. Was he regretting he hadn't married one of her sisters? Carlin watched her, knowing he'd done something wrong, but not sure what. She didn't want him to let Travis force them to sell the ranch, did she? Good night, Hope. Good night. Hope slipped off to her room, trying not to let him see the tears. She'd messed up their marriage by not being willing to consummate immediately. That had to be the problem. She climbed into bed, worried about her marriage. What if they could never recover from her mistakes? 
Would he even be interested if she were to walk into his room and climb into bed with him? She sighed. Faith was getting married tomorrow evening. She had to keep smiling for her sisters. Asterisk. After the wedding, Hope and Carlin walked home hand in hand. She rested her head against his shoulder. It's so beautiful out here at night, she said. I don't miss Kentucky at all, and I was sure I would. I'm glad you don't. I don't know how I'd react if my wife just wanted to run off back to her parents. Hope sighed. No matter how bad life got, she knew she'd never want to go back to her parents. No, I like the freedom I have here. I'm working harder than I've ever worked, but I have so much more freedom. I love working with the children, and your mother is just darling. She's so helpful with both the kids and the quilts she's making for the dolls. You all seem to revolve your lives around those silly dolls. They're not silly. Trust me. You're going to be thankful for those dolls soon. Carlin shrugged. I'm not so sure about that. I guess if they make you and your sisters happy, that's a good thing, though. Are you working tomorrow? She asked. Yeah, we have to work on the fences still. He sighed. I hope Faith and Cooper have an easier time being together than we do. I swear, between my position as mayor and your daycare and sewing, I feel like we have no time together at all. You could shut your phone off one evening per week, she suggested, holding her breath for his response. Would he agree? I would, if not for that stupid traffic light. We have to get that thing resolved as soon as we can. Hope didn't say another word about it. When they walked into the house, she grabbed his tie and led him to the couch by it, curling up beside him and kissing him. She was ready to really be his wife, and ever since she'd made that decision, he was too busy to pay any attention to her. Carlin was stunned when his timid little bride grabbed him and kissed him. He was all for it, though. She tasted sweeter than honey to him, and he loved touching her. He turned toward her on the couch, his hands going to her waist to pull her even closer to him. Hope let out a small moan, her hands pushing his suit jacket off his shoulders before going to work on the knot of his tie. Ever since she'd seen him that day with no shirt on, she hadn't been able to stop thinking about his bare chest and wondering what the rest of him would look like with nothing covering him. Carlin deepened the kiss, his hand going around to cup her breast through the silky fabric of the dress she wore. The ringing of his phone startled him, and he sat up straight, pulling it out of his pocket. He looked at the number and cussed it under his breath. I don't want to take this, but I have to. Hope just nodded, her eyes glazed. After a minute she got up and went to her bathroom, slipping into the shower. If he was going to spend all night on the phone, she was going to get some work done. Asterisk. Hope spent the next day at home, working on the books for Faith's business as well as adding up the profit Culpepper Care was already bringing in. Carlin had told her he wasn't going to draw a check from the ranch any longer, and they were going to have to live on his paycheck from the city, which was tiny. When she was certain she'd done all the bookkeeping she could, she went out to her car and climbed behind the wheel. She needed to make a trip into town for groceries for the week. She had a better idea of what the children would eat now, so she could choose more wisely. She wanted to only serve healthy meals for the kids, but they all seemed to prefer pizza and chicken nuggets. Most of their parents said to feed them what they'd eat, so that's what she decided to do. Asterisk. Carlin went home in the middle of the morning, claiming that he had forgotten his work gloves. They were in his saddlebag, right where they belonged, but what he really wanted was to spend a few minutes with his sweet wife. Had she been trying to tell him she was ready to make love the night before? It had seemed like it, and then he'd blown it by taking that call. He walked in and called her name. Hope. Are you here? When she didn't answer, he went in search of her. She had done all the laundry and cleaned the bathrooms yesterday, as well as mopping all the surfaces. Now the whole house had a nice lemony scent. He first went into his office. 
He was shocked to see how well she'd settled in. There were little doll clothes everywhere, but no hope. He walked into her room, but again no hope. He started to leave, but he noticed her nightstand drawer opened and something caught his eye. He walked over and rummaged through the drawer, his jaw dropping in surprise. He picked up the vibrator from the drawer, turning it over in his hands. She wouldn't make love to him, but she was willing to use a toy like that on herself? Well, no wonder she didn't need him. He didn't know if he should be angry or disgusted. He put the toy back in the drawer and slammed it closed. Wherever she was, she didn't need him obviously. Why would she? Asterisk. When Hope returned home from the store, she put the groceries away and sat down to write out menus for the week. She carefully wrote down what the children would eat for breakfast, snacks, and lunch every day, and then typed it into her laptop, printing it out. When she finished that, she started dinner before going back into the craft room to get back to work on the doll clothes. Soon, she'd be done with this project, and she'd be able to go back to making the regular clothes and the bodies for the dolls. And she'd have 22 different sets of outfits ready to be purchased. They'd already sold four sets of clothes on the website since yesterday morning when she put them up. They were going to make a serious profit off this idea. When Carlin came in at the end of the day, she kissed him like she always did, but she felt the need to step back quickly. If he was too busy for her, then she had to give the illusion she was too busy for him. She wasn't going to leave her heart unguarded that way. As soon as he saw her, Carlin got annoyed. She was using sex toys and holding out on him. That was just rude as far as he was concerned. While they ate, she asked questions about his day, but she seemed colder to him. Maybe he'd imagined her affection before. She probably didn't even know how to be affectionate. After dinner, he started making phone calls, refusing to be sucked into her drama, while she did the dishes and went back to her craft room to work. When he got tired, he just went to bed without a word. Did he really owe her anything else? Hope was sure her marriage would never work. Carlin was still keeping up appearances and pretending to have feelings for her, but he wasn't even kissing her anymore. Did he wish he'd married Chastity? Asterisk. Monday morning, Chastity seemed to be fixated on pregnancy. Are you pregnant yet, Hope? She asked. Hope shook her head. How am I supposed to know yet? You know it's not time for my cycle. All of the Quinlan girls had been on the same cycle for as long as they could remember. Every month like clockwork, they'd all start craving chocolate three days before. When their father saw the chocolate start to disappear, he knew what it meant, and he usually tried to schedule a business trip for that week. But do you think you are? Chastity persisted. I have no idea. Probably not. I don't think I'm fortunate enough to get pregnant the first month. Joy smiled, getting into the conversation. You know, I think we should take pregnancy tests together every month. There's one that's accurate three days before your cycle is expected. We could all take that test together at nap time. Hope hated the idea, but she didn't want to be a party pooper. Uh, sure. We can do that. So far only she and Faith were married, but that would change soon. Joy was getting married that evening. Hope didn't quite understand why her sister would want to marry on a weekday, and Joy hadn't explained it in a way that made sense to anyone. Mondays are kind of dreary days. I think a Monday wedding is a way to perk things up around here. Why are Mondays dreary? Faith had asked. I don't know but I intend to keep this one from suffering the usual Monday fate. I'm getting married. No one had dared question her more. Joy got strange ideas into her head, and because they all loved her so much, they didn't dare argue with her. Joy was the sister who really did live up to her name, spreading joy to all those with whom she came into contact. Faith shrugged. I'm in for peeing on a stick together. Well, not together. I love you three, but I'm not peeing anywhere but a private room. Sorry. 
Joy grinned. No, peeing on a stick in private is the best way to do things, I'm sure. Are you excited about your wedding? Hope asked. Joy was going to wear her wedding gown, because she hadn't taken the time to buy another. So excited. I can't wait to move in with Colby. Joy glanced over at Chastity. Although, I'm a little jealous of Chastity getting Linda all to herself for a while. Chastity made a face. I know as well as you do that you're just saying that, so I won't feel bad about being the last to marry. Well, I don't feel bad. I'm getting the best of the four guys, after all. I can't wait till I get him alone. Hope smiled at her youngest sister. I haven't spent much time with Chris. Tell me about him. Chastity smiled, staring off into space dreamily. He's really smart. I love him for his mind. Hope burst out laughing. I can believe he's smart, but Chastity, you love him for his mind? Really? You care nothing about what's in his pants? Oh, well, yeah. I'm sure I'm going to love little Chris as much as I love big Chris. Linda walked into the room then, overhearing just the last part of the conversation. Oh, you're thinking of names for the kids already? I love the idea of you naming my grandson after Chris. You don't even have to call him Christopher. You could call him Christian, and we'd all know he was named after Chris. Chastity looked at Hope with wide eyes. Hope could see her sister wanted to correct Linda, but she was afraid to. Even Chastity knew not to talk about her future husband's male anatomy with his mother standing right there. You tell me about Chris, Linda. I haven't really gotten to spend any time with him. Oh, Chris is definitely the smartest of the bunch. He does all the paperwork for the ranch, as well as the work he does teaching science. For a while, I thought he was going to break tradition and become an astronaut, but instead he became a science teacher and helps his brothers on the weekend. Sounds like a nice man. Hope smiled at chastity, hoping her sister didn't feel like she was getting the runt of the litter. She couldn't imagine being married to anyone but Carlin, even if things weren't perfect between them. The doorbell rang then, and the kids started coming in. After that, it was full-scale chaos until nap time. Hope went home to change after work, putting on the same dress she'd worn to Faith's wedding. They hadn't brought a lot of clothes with them, knowing Grace and Honor would ship anything they left behind. She was already dressed for the wedding when Carlin walked into the house, hurrying to shower and change. She waited patiently, wondering what she could do to alleviate the tension between them. When he came out of his bedroom, he was straightening his tie and looking everywhere but at her. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Joy is really excited about marrying Colby. Good. Colby's excited too. He said nothing else, just opened the door for her so they could walk. Hope waited for Carlin to take her hand, but he didn't until they were just outside the back door of his mother's house. You haven't told anyone we're not sleeping together, have you? Hope shook her head. I promised I wouldn't, so I won't. I'm always true to my word. Promises are interesting things, aren't they? Hope stopped walking and looked at him. Have I done something to upset you? He laughed, and the sound was harsh. Why would I be upset? I got just what I wanted, right? He opened the back door, walking in before her. Hope had no idea what was going through her husband's head, but she was tired of being treated like a leper. When they got home, she was going to confront him. There had to be a reason for his behavior. Whether it was logical or not remained to be seen. Once the wedding was over, and they'd all had the supper Linda made, Carlin and Hope walked home together. Brother Anthony was in fine form tonight, Hope said, wishing she could draw him out before they got home. He always is. Carlin stared straight ahead. If she wanted to spend her time with her vibrator, then she could, but she could have conversations with the stupid thing too. When they got home, Carlin turned toward his room. Hope grabbed his arm. We need to talk. 
About what? He asked, his voice angry. About what's wrong? I don't know what you think I've done, but I've spent every ounce of energy I have taking care of your house, serving you meals, and trying to help the ranch out of the financial hole your cousin is determined to put it in. I want to understand what about that upsets you. None of that upsets me, he said calmly. It's your little machine that upsets me. My machine? Hope racked her brain, trying to think of what machine she had that would upset him. Her sewing machine? If you're jealous of my machine, you have issues. He stared at her in shock. She didn't even look embarrassed about having the thing. I'm not jealous of it. I'm pissed that you'd choose it over me. I'm yours anytime you want me. You're the one who's been shutting me out, not the other way around. She took a step closer to him. Your phone calls are so much more interesting than talking to me, or even kissing me. Obviously, you're the one choosing something over me. He shook his head at her. You really believe that, don't you? I really do. When was the last time we had an actual conversation? Our marriage is never going to work if you don't talk to me. He shrugged. I signed papers saying I'd marry you within a month of your arrival and not try to separate for at least a year. That gives us eleven and a half months to go. I can make it. Can you? Hope took a step back, surprised at his words. Are you giving up on our marriage already? She couldn't believe it. She'd already started to fall, she shook her head, refusing to even finish the thought. No, she wasn't falling for him. He wasn't worth it. She turned away from him and walked to her bedroom, closing the door softly behind her. She wanted to slam it, but she wouldn't give him the pleasure of knowing how much he'd upset her. Undressing quickly, she put on her nightgown and got into bed. Staring at the wall in the dark, she tucked one arm under her. Why had this seemed like the ideal situation and the right thing to do? Marrying Carlin Culpepper had to be the dumbest thing she'd ever done. At least her sisters were happy. Maybe knowing the situation had worked out well for them would help fill the emptiness she felt inside. She wanted to scream and rage at herself. Why, just when she knew she'd lost him forever, did she realize she was in love with the jerk? Why couldn't her heart be logical? She buried her face in the pillow and allowed the tears to fall. He wasn't worth them, but that didn't stop them from coming. Chapter 9 Two weeks later, nothing had changed between Hope and Carlin. They were barely roommates, not really speaking to one another unless absolutely necessary. Hope was angry enough with him over his attitude about her sewing machine, she no longer had anything to say. Well, her brain didn't anyway. Her heart wanted her to throw herself at his feet and beg his forgiveness. Why couldn't he accept her as she was? Their third Monday of marriage, she started dinner in the crock pot like she did most mornings, and fixed breakfast. I have a council meeting tonight, he told her the first words he'd spoken to her that day. All right. What did she care what he did? After breakfast, she got up and did the dishes while he finished eating, bringing his bowl to her. He stopped at the door and turned to her as if to say something, but then he grabbed his hat and clapped it against his leg, leaving without another word. Hope felt one lone tear slip down her cheek and brushed it away angrily. He wanted to end their marriage as soon as he could. He didn't deserve her tears. She got her craft bag ready, so she could work that day before leaving. Faith was back in full swing, and she only went to the big house if Hope called her begging for help. Joy and Chastity helped around their crafts, but mostly the work with the children was done by her and Linda. Joy had made a huge castle for Barbie dolls, and she was meticulously making the furniture for it. She planned to put it up on Etsy that evening. Joy met her at the back door, her face glowing. I got the tests at the store yesterday, she whispered. What tests? The pregnancy tests. Today's the day we all take them together. Hope's face fell. Oh, yeah. Right. 
at lunchtime? I can't wait to see if some of us are pregnant. I know you'll probably go first, like you do with everything, but I hope I am too. I'm walking on air, just thinking about it. For once, Joy's overwhelming positivity was about to drive Hope crazy. I hope you are too. Hope smiled at her sister, wishing she could hide her sense of doom. They'd always be sisters, of course, but when Carlin divorced her, they wouldn't have the same kind of bond. Would her sisters be torn between loyalty to her and loyalty to their husbands? Hope was quiet through most of the morning, saying only what she needed to say to keep the children on task. Once the whole herd was down for their nap, she met her sisters in Linda's bathroom. This seems weird, Hope protested. We're all just going to pee on the stick and line up the stupid tests? Joy nodded. I'm so excited. I'll go first. Ten minutes later, there were four pregnancy tests lined up on the counter, and Hope knew hers was negative. You had to actually have sex to be pregnant, after all. All of Hope's dreams were right there in her negative pregnancy test. Her sisters would have babies, and she wouldn't. She wanted to run from the house screaming, but that would be telling. No, she would pretend everything was fine until Carlin kicked her out. She'd promised, and she didn't break her promises. When she got home that night, she decided she was taking the night off. She felt like the opposite of her name. She was hopeless, and it felt terrible. She ate her dinner alone, sitting at the table in the dining room. She was happy that there would be babies, and the terms of the will were fulfilled, but she was sad for herself. She didn't want to be alone. She sat in front of the television and watched more of the show Carlin had shown her on one of her first nights there. Something called Friends. She laughed at the antics of the characters on the screen, thankful something could make her laugh with the way she was feeling. When Carlin came in after nine, she turned to look at him. He looked dead on his feet, and her natural compassion took over. Are you hungry? I made some Swiss steak. He nodded. I'm going to shower really quick, and then I'll nuke some. He walked back to his room, and she jumped to her feet, microwaving the steak and the baked potato she'd made for him. She had his meal on the table, along with a glass of sweet tea when he came out. Sitting beside him, she took his hand in hers. She smiled at him when he looked at her with confusion. Tell me about it. What happened? He sighed. Would you believe two councilmen actually got into a fist fight because one of them said he'd leave town if the traffic light was put in? He shook his head. I ended the whole thing, though. I read last night in the town ordinances that I have veto power over any bill. I told them I didn't think the town was ready for a traffic light. So the debate is over. I'll veto it if it comes to me, which means there's no reason to continue. I bet you made some enemies. He shrugged. At this point, I don't even care. Their childish attitudes were taking up way too much of my time. His eyes met hers. I do realize my ridiculous amount of time on the phone had a lot to do with us fighting. Hope shook her head. I understood. Can we start over? He asked, his voice soft. I don't want to spend the next year at odds with you. I want a real marriage. Hope nodded. That's what I want too. I tried to tell you that one night, but then the phone call started. Carlin brought the hand, he still held to his lips. Then let's have a real marriage. Hope jumped up. You finish eating. When you're done, stick your plate in the dishwasher and run it. I'll be right back. She rushed from the room, knowing he would think she was making no sense, but she didn't care. All she could think about was the sexy little negligee Chastity bought her for her wedding night. She showered quickly and shaved her legs. She refused to have hairy legs the first time she made love with her husband. What would he think? She blew her hair dry before going into her room to put on the nightgown, wrinkling her nose when she saw the stupid vibrator. She had to get rid of the thing, 
but she didn't want anyone seeing it. Maybe she could sneak it into her car on Sunday when she did the grocery shopping and find a dumpster somewhere. She pulled a robe on over her lingerie and then went out to join Carlin. He was just putting his plate and glass into the dishwasher. Oh, you finished eating. He nodded. And I did the dishes. He eyed her in the robe, wondering what was underneath it. When he'd said he wanted to have a real marriage, he didn't think she'd jump up and get ready to go to bed with him. Not that he was complaining. Carlin was still in the shorts and t-shirt he'd pulled on after his shower. She caught his hand and dragged him into his bedroom, planning on getting his clothes off him just as quickly as she could. She closed his door softly behind them and closed her eyes as she dropped the robe. She was afraid he wouldn't like what he saw. Carlin looked her up and down, taking a step forward after a moment. He put his index finger under her chin and lifted it. He waited a moment for her to open her eyes, and when she did, he whispered, You're beautiful. I'm glad you're my wife. You don't wish you'd chosen chastity? He laughed. Chris can deal with your nymphomaniac, sister. I'm perfectly content with the woman I chose. He leaned down, kissing her softly. Are you sure you're ready for this? Do you want to wait? I don't want to force you to do anything you're not ready for. He hoped she wouldn't take him up on his offer, but he felt the need to be kind after the way he'd exploded at her. He could forgive the vibrator, because he knew he was partially to blame. She shook her head. I'm sure I don't need more time. I wouldn't have asked for time three weeks ago, if I'd had a little time to get to know you first. He smiled. I had to make sure to stake my claim before my brothers saw you. I think your brothers are very content with my sisters. She reached out to him, moving her hands under the bottom of his t-shirt, stroking slowly up his chest. We should get this off you. He stepped back and stripped off his shirt, and she pressed up against him. Do you have any idea how much your bare chest turns me on? Not as much as your bare chest would turn me on, he quipped, grinned down at her. Wanna compare? She swallowed hard. Part of making love was bearing herself for her husband. As hard as that was, she could do it. Sure. He blinked at her, surprised by her ready response. Really? She nodded. I think so. Are you nervous? Of course, I'm nervous. I've never been with a man before. No, just that ridiculous toy. I'm not going to hurt you. He pushed one strap off her shoulder and down her arm, kissing a path from her cheek to her neck and down. She wound her fingers through his hair, holding him to her. That feels so nice. Your skin is so soft. His shorts were starting to constrict him too much, little Charlie pushing against the front of them. Maybe we should take this to the bed. At her nod, he scooped her up in his arms as if she weighed nothing, carrying her to the bed and gently laying her down on it. He quickly stripped off his shorts and followed her down. Hope averted her eyes, not wanting to see him in all his glory. She knew they were married, but it didn't seem like something she should do. Her mother had talked about this being something only done in the dark. That meant she shouldn't look, right? He looked down into her face. You're allowed to look at me, you know. We're married. I know. Kind of. Kind of? What do you mean? Promise you won't laugh? How would she be able to explain her misgivings without sounding childish? If I laugh, you might leave or worse. Kick me out of my own bed and make me sleep in that tiny little bed in your room. The guest room, she corrected. What? Carlin asked. I'm sharing this room with you from now on. That's the guest room. Okay, I promise I won't laugh, and I'll leave it at that. Her rapid change of subject was starting to make his head spin, and he wanted to get this conversation over with so they could get to the good part of the evening. Well, my mom always made it sound like sex was dirty. 
She told me a woman never sees her husband naked, because it just isn't right. He blinked a few times. Seriously? Seriously. I feel funny seeing you naked. So that's why you closed your eyes. Yeah. Hope made a face, more embarrassed than ever. I know it's stupid, but we were raised in a very conservative, backwards, home. I plan on loving what we do together, but I have to get past my hang-ups, to do that. We'll work through them together. What can I do to help? For tonight, I think it's just a matter of, well, doing it. She couldn't even use one of his silly euphemisms, now that the moment was upon them. Doing it? Doing what? Playing baseball? Baseball? She asked. I'm planning to hit a home run. Hope giggled a little. I had no idea I married such a romantic, she said, rolling her eyes. Hey, I'm trying to make sure you're in the mood here. Is it working? Just looking at you puts me in the mood. No effort required. She pulled him down for a kiss, surprising him a little. He kissed her with everything inside him. His tongue moved into her mouth to tangle with hers while his hand slowly stroked her garment off her body. When she was bare beneath him, he moved to her side, one hand going between her spread thighs, to stroke her. He kissed a trail from her lips, down her neck, and to her breast, taking one rosy peek into his mouth. You taste good, he muttered against her flesh. Hope had no idea what to do with her hands, so she wound them through his hair, arching up into his mouth. She focused on what he was doing to her, not on the feeling that what was happening was wrong. Knowing it wasn't wrong didn't seem to be enough for her. She had to block it out completely, forcing her mind to shut off, so she wouldn't feel guilty. His hand between her thighs was stroking at her nub of flesh, making her heart beat rapidly. She felt out of breath, and a tightening was happening in her belly. She felt like something was going to break inside her. I feel weird. He looked up at her, a twinkle in his eye. What feels weird? He caught her nipple between his lips again. This? He made his finger dance against the flesh, between her thighs. Or this? Her gasp at his movement between her thighs was all the answer he needed. He carefully plunged one finger inside of her, moving it slowly in and out of her tight channel. She gasped, clutching his shoulders. I don't think you should do that. The tightening in her stomach was increasing, making her feel like she was going to explode. You have to stop. He chuckled low in his throat. Not on your life. Not till you finish. Finish? What do you mean? Her mother had told her to lie back and let her husband do what he must. She couldn't have meant this. It felt too good. Suddenly her stomach clenched, and she let out a moan. She sank back into the pillows, feeling a little dazed. Wow. He laughed, moving to cover her with his body, pleased that he was finally getting a turn. Wow. Is that all you can say? More please? He pressed his lips to hers, slowly moving into her body. Her cry of pain caught him by surprise. Are you all right? I don't know. That hurt for a second, but I think I'm all right now. He stared down at her, holding still within her. Something didn't seem right, but he was in too big of a hurry to worry about it just then. He started moving slowly within her, watching her face for further signs of pain. How's that? That feels nice. She wrapped her arms around him, stroking his bare back, scraping her fingernails on his skin. He caught her legs and wrapped them around his waist, his face buried against her throat. He was determined to make certain she found her pleasure again, before he found his own. Hope felt the now familiar tightening in her belly start again, and she moved with him, wanting the same thing to happen that had happened before. She may not know much about how this was supposed to work, but she knew she liked everything she was feeling. She broke apart in his arms minutes later, idly noting that he kept moving, until he shouted her name, collapsing atop her. 
It took a few minutes for him to come back to earth, but he rolled to her side as soon as he realized where he was. I'm sorry. I must have been crushing you. Hope rolled with him, snuggling into his arms. No, I liked it. I felt like I was part of you. He stroked her cheek. You're not allowed to move back to the spare bedroom now, just so you know. I'm keeping you right here where you belong. She sighed happily. I want to stay here. Then I won't have to keep hiding things from my sisters. Hiding things from your sisters? You asked me to pretend we were intimate. My sisters wanted us to all take a pregnancy test together today. I took one, feeling like an idiot the whole time. Carlin sighed. Anyone pregnant? She nodded. To the first month. Terms of the will have been fulfilled. That was quick. He stroked his hand over her back. She nodded, yawning. Looking at the clock, she groaned. It's eleven. There aren't enough hours in the day. I caught you watching television tonight. It's the first time I've seen you really relax and stop working. I do know how to stop working. There just hasn't been a call for it yet. When we're sure we'll get to keep the ranch, I'll relax. Probably for a whole month. He chuckled softly. Go to sleep, Hope. Tomorrow is another busy day. Her eyes were already drifting closed. They always are. Carlin kept his arms around her, cradling her against him. His wife was a special woman, one he already cared about more than he wanted to admit. How had he stayed angry with her for two weeks? He thought about the toy he'd found in her nightstand, and he knew it wasn't something she'd ever used. She'd been too surprised by her orgasm to be a regular sex toy user. But why did she have it? He thought about waking her and asking her, but she was already asleep, her breathing even. He knew she was working as hard as he was to try to help keep the ranch. His mother had told him about how special she was, and how she seemed so sad at times, reading him the riot act. You've married a very special woman, Carlin James Culpepper. Don't you dare do anything to hurt her, or I'll buy the black-eyed peas myself, she'd said. Carlin had no doubt she was referring to the country song, Goodbye Earl, where two women poisoned a man who had beaten one of them. His mother had said more than once if he ever heard a girl that way, she'd make the black-eyed peas. Of course, his mother had also told him and his brothers if they ever were out with a girl and just couldn't control themselves to call her and she'd bring a condom. Every time he thought he was going to make it into the back seat with a girl, he'd seen his mother's face swimming before his eyes. Talk about an erection killer. She'd confessed a couple of years before that had been her intention all along. She'd wanted them to think of her. The woman was evil, devious, and brilliant, all rolled into one. He yawned, adjusting Hope's head a little bit, so it wasn't cutting into his shoulder so much. He reached over and turned off the lamp beside the bed, doing his best not to disturb her. She worked too hard to not get enough sleep. He fell asleep with a smile on his face, thinking about the long days and nights to come. His sweet little bride had obviously forgiven his craziness. Now, he just had to figure out what was up with the vibrator. And why had she let him be angry with her about it, instead of telling him she wasn't using the thing? He shrugged. That was something they could figure out tomorrow, now that he knew they'd have one. Chapter 10 Hope woke up to Carlin's alarm going off at five the following morning. As much as she usually loved mornings, she let out a groan. She hadn't slept nearly enough. Carlin rolled toward her, hugging her close. Let's be late today. She pulled back, looking at him in the darkness. We can't be late. I have kids that will be at your mom's in two hours. She stifled a yawn. She wanted to stay in bed all day, but she had to take care of her responsibilities. No matter how much she didn't want to. He sighed. Adulting isn't easy. She giggled, kissing him quickly. No, it's not. 
but now that you're done with the traffic light nonsense, we'll have more time together in the evenings. She hoped he didn't have crises like that often, because she needed more time with him. But you're always sewing something in the evenings. Only because you're always on the phone. I've got most of the sewing I need to do, caught up to the point I should be able to keep up during nap time. Was that why he hated her sewing machine? Because she spent so much time using it? Really? We're actually going to be able to act like newlyweds and spend time together? Really? She rolled out of bed, hurrying to her robe. It was different seeing each other right before making love than it was the morning after. I'll go make breakfast. She desperately needed another shower after the activities of the night before, but she'd get that after he left. Over breakfast, she felt very shy, wondering if he was thinking about all the things they'd done together the night before. She was unable to meet his eyes directly. She knew they'd done nothing wrong, but she still felt strange in the daylight. After they finished eating, he caught her to him, kissing her passionately. Are you sure we can't be late today? Do you really want to explain why you were late to Cooper? And your mother? Because I'm not explaining it. I love your mom, but I'm not talking about sex with my mother-in-law. He sighed. I'm not afraid of telling mom why we're late. It's Cooper that would scare me. That boy has us on a tighter schedule than I've ever dreamed a ranch would operate on. Why, even Granddaddy did whatever Cooper told him to do, because he knew the ranch would have folded without Cooper there to boss us all around. He kissed her one last time. I'm looking forward to our evening together. Hope clung to him for a moment. Me too. How is it that we were married first, but got to spend time alone together last? It's my stupid job as mayor. I enjoy it usually. I'll enjoy it again, I'm sure. He opened the door and turned to wink at her. I'll see you at lunchtime. She smiled, waving him off. When she got to the big house, Joy hurried to her. You look so happy. Hope smiled at her sister. I am happy. Why wouldn't I be? Joy shrugged. I'm not sure. But I've thought something was wrong for a while now. Joy was more in tune with Hope's emotions than her other sisters were. She hated that her sister sensed that she'd been unhappy. Nope. Life couldn't be better. How are you? Joy grinned, her whole face lighting up with a smile. Joyful. Hope laughed. Her sister had always been joyful. I'm glad. Did you finish the castle? Yes. It's up on eBay, and already has ten bids. Oh, that's great. What's your next project? The Barbie castle had looked amazing the last time Hope had seen it, but that was the previous day. Hope couldn't wait to see it completely done. A snowmobile and condo. Should be fun. Maybe you could make just some furniture sets as well. That would be a good break from the big projects. Hope grinned. I'm thinking about taking tomorrow morning off. Could you cover for me? Oh, definitely. Especially if it's for baby-making purposes. We need as many babies around here as possible. Hope blushed, but didn't comment on why. Thank you. I'll cover your naptime shift for you. Sounds good to me. Joy smiled as Faith came into the big house. We weren't expecting you today. Faith held up a piece of paper. Hope, we've sold all but five of your sets of holiday outfits. I need you to make more. That was a brilliant idea. How about orders for the babies? Have you gotten more? Yes. I got four overnight. I can't keep up. Faith smiled at Hope. I also got a special request from a mother who purchased a baby doll for her daughter last year. What's that? Her daughter wants a dress to match her dolls. Because it's a custom order, we could charge double what we usually would. Faith bit her lip, waiting for Hope's response. Sure. I can do that. 
Hope frowned. I'll have to look online to find some good matching patterns. How specific were they about what they wanted? The mom wants an everyday dress for them both. She doesn't want something fancy, because that would be too much work to keep nice. Hope smiled. Good, that won't take as long to make either. Tell her we'll do it, and I'll start looking for patterns. Do you have the little girl's size? 6. All right. I'm on it. Faith hugged Hope and hurried back out the door, obviously going to work on making more baby dolls. It was nice to see her able to work without censure. We're never going to be able to keep up with her rapid orders, Hope told Joy. Linda walked in then. Faith got more orders? Those dolls of hers are amazing. Lots more orders. Hope turned to face her mother-in-law. Joy is going to work for me tomorrow morning. I'm taking the morning off. Linda smiled. I think that's a really good idea. You've worked nonstop seven days per week since you got here. So have you. Well, that's different. Linda shrugged. I'm used to working all the time. And you had house guests for much longer than anyone should have house guests. And you've opened your house up to 15 kids running wild every day. But it's fun. Hope shook her head. If you really don't mind, then I'm going to do it. Good for you. I hate seeing you girls work so hard to try to save the ranch. It's our children's inheritance. Hope had believed that when she first arrived, and now she believed it again. Of course, she and Carlin hadn't exactly talked about their future. What if he was still planning on ending their marriage in 11 months like he'd said? She shook her head. She wasn't going to worry about it. That was the whole point of taking the next morning off work. She would be able to talk to Carlin about her worries. When he came in for lunch, he kissed her sweetly. She stood on tiptoe to whisper in his ear, Joy is going to take care of the kids for me in the morning. Tell Cooper you're taking the morning off, and we'll have our own private little honeymoon. Carlin grinned. I'll tell him this afternoon. Asterisk. After she got home that evening, she put a chicken pot pie she'd made over the weekend into the oven. She needed to talk to Carlin before any more hanky-panky took place. She had to know what her future would hold. While she waited for him, she picked up the house, making sure it was in perfect order. She was a little embarrassed she hadn't made the bed before going to work that morning. It was so unlike her to neglect her responsibilities that way. The pot pie was on the table when he opened the door. That smells good, he said. Have I told you lately that you're a wonderful cook? She smiled, shaking her head. No, but I'm glad you think so. While they ate, she told him about the outfits that had sold for Faith's business. Now that Faith had finally come clean about what she was doing, it was easier for Hope to talk about it. She hated keeping secrets from her husband. You know, all those little outfits I made for Faith's dolls? He nodded. Yeah, you worked on them night and day. I made 22 sets of six outfits, and we've sold all but five of them. I need to start making more. Isn't that great? I guess. Are you really making a profit on those? Oh, yeah. It costs us $14.50 to make six outfits and we're selling them for 75 bucks for the set of six. That's over $60 profit for each set of clothes. And how much time are you putting into a set of six? Less than I thought. It takes me about 15 minutes to sew each outfit, now that I have it down, and I cut them all out together. I spend around six hours cutting out 22 of every outfit. So when all the math is done, I'm making around $35 per hour. That's really good money. He nodded. Very good. That's going to help our bottom line a lot. I don't think you have any idea. I've started a savings account for our contributions, and we're going to be able to make a significant difference. She looked at him. We haven't really talked about money, 
because I didn't feel like I could approach you with the way things were between us. How much do you think it's going to cost to pay Travis off? Carlin rubbed the back of his neck. Well, the buildings aren't part of his inheritance. The big house was left to mom. Each of our homes were left to us. It's really just the land that we'll need to pay him for. And a share of the cattle, of course. How much do you think that equates to? His share of the land would be about a hundred grand. Another eighty grand for his share of the herd. In my head, I'm rounding up to two hundred fifty thousand. I don't think he can ask for more than that. Hope's face lit up. We can do that. We can? She nodded. Definitely. It'll be tight for six months, but after that, we're good. But can you keep it up for six months? All of you? I know the pace is pretty hard. She laughed. If you men can keep it up for six months, we can keep it up for six months. We're strong women. He smiled at that. I know you are. Knowing we're helping so much with our crafts, are you still jealous of my sewing machine? He stared at her with a blank look. Your sewing machine? Why would I be jealous of your sewing machine? She frowned. I have no idea. You told me you were though. I did? Carlin had no idea what she was talking about. You said you were jealous of my machine. Hope said. His eyes widened. You thought I meant your sewing machine? No. I meant your vibrator. Why would any man ever be jealous of a sewing machine? My, she blushed scarlet. Chastity gave me that for a wedding gift. I didn't want to hurt her feelings, but I would never use it. She leaned close to him to whisper conspiratorially. I think it was made for an elephant. That thing is huge. He laughed. Yeah, it is. Why do you still have it then? I didn't want to throw it away and have you accidentally see it. I had visions of you taking the trash out and the bag busting and that huge thing coming out. I was planning on taking it with me when I go grocery shopping this week and putting it in a dumpster somewhere. Her eyes narrowed at him. You mean that's what you've been upset with me about? He nodded. I thought you were refusing to have sex with me and using a vibrator instead. It was more than a little annoying. Hope frowned. I guess I can see that. You should have just asked about it. I put it in a drawer because Chastity gave it to me right before the wedding and I had no idea what to do with the thing. Your sister is a mess. Hope nodded. She definitely is. She would be mortified if she knew it had caused problems between us, though. She gave it to me in case you were bad in the sack. Her words, not mine. Well, throw the blasted thing away. I promise you, if you ever need a sex toy, I'm here for you. Hope blushed. I will gladly throw it away. I felt like an idiot having it hidden in my drawer all this time anyway. She reached out and took his hand. I should have made sure to clarify when you were upset about my machine. I really thought you meant my sewing machine, and I thought you were nuts. And when you told me you wouldn't stay married to me. I never should have said that. I didn't mean it, even then. I was tired and angry, but saying that was inexcusable. I always knew we'd work it out. I didn't. I kept envisioning my future alone. I knew I loved you as soon as you said we were splitting. I don't know what's wrong with me that it hit me then, but it did. Wait. You love me? Carlin pulled her from her chair and onto his lap. You really love me? She nodded. Of course, I do. I knew I loved you when I knew I wanted to make love with you. I love you too, Hope. I hate that we wasted so much time. We got to know each other better. How is that time wasted? He kissed her softly. I guess it's not, but it feels like it is. I'm glad we talked about this. Now we don't have to waste time talking tomorrow. 
We can skip right to the good stuff. We can skip right to the good stuff now. She giggled. You go get a shower, and I'll have the dishes done by the time you're done. I'll meet you in bed. We could shower together. We could. Fine, get the dishes done, and meet me in bed. You'll just sneak out of bed in the middle of the night, to get them done anyway. Hope grinned at him. You already know me so well. I'll race you to see who's done first. He kissed her one last time before heading to the bedroom. You'd better hurry. Of course, I'll hurry. I have everything I want. A man who loves me, and a good life. Moving to Culpeper, Wyoming, was the smartest thing she'd ever done.